you know, this might just be the easy conclusion to make. And it's one that I don't think is all too foreign to all of y'all who are watching these videos and paying attention to the rumors. But earlier this week, or last week, excuse me, on the Spit and Chicklets podcast, they had themselves a guest appearance from Matt Murley. Murley, of course, is a former NHL player. He had played with the Penguins and yeah, it was a while ago, but he made himself an appearance on the show, and in this 1 minute and 25 second clip on Twitter, you have yourselves what was the scoop that Murley revealed on the show itself. Now, he said from his own sources that he had access to that the Trevor Zegra situation in Anaheim has resulted in a low ball offer from the Anaheim Ducks. Now, we did make a few videos saying, hey, the Ducks are lowballing Zegras. They're giving him two, three million dollar contracts when the guy had 60 points last year and the year before that. Zegras is a superstar caliber talent, not because he is the best player in the world, but because he is arguably the most marketable. And there is value in that, not to mention just how good of a hockey player he is in general, wherein he's probably definitely better than your average Joe making two or three million dollars a year, especially for a guy who is only 22. This is a star of the future, and Pat Verbeek, the GM of the Ducks, apparently does not see it that way. So, whilst on the show you had yourselves Matt Murley saying that because this is the situation in Anaheim, there are sources that are asking around about this situation. Teams that are reaching out to the Ducks saying, hey, what would it take to get your hands off of Zegris and give him to us? Paul Bissonnette then asks, hey, what are those teams? There is a mention of the Buffalo Sabres, that in which we already did make a video about. And then there also is a mention of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Murley says he could see Toronto being one of the teams that asked around. And the idea of a Nylander for Zegris trade straight up does make sense to him. So that's what this video is about here. Let's talk about an Anaheim-Toronto swap involving two guys that are in precarious contract situations. The current RFA, Trevor Zegers, and the UFA to be next season, William Nylander. Could we see some sort of a trade? And if there is a trade, what is the price attached to it? Is it a one-for-one -one deal? Is it a two, three asset type of thing? Let's start off here with Zegras. He's a guy who, if you had to evaluate his trade value just right now at the moment, without a contract, okay, whatever. You kind of need to decrease some value there because you would need to commit some dollars to him. But Trevor Zegras, as an RFA at 22 years old, is a decently sized center, six feet, 185, left-handed guy. He's not really going to be a big brute force out there, although he does have his fair share of penalty minutes. He has been acquiring a lot of those over the past few seasons seasons. Even last year, the guy had 88 penalty minutes, so averaging just around a penalty minute a game. But he also had 65 points in 81 games played, not to mention multiple Michigan goals and very nice Michigan assists as well. Trevor Zegras has been just an absolute stud of a playmaker, and one of these just brand new talents that we haven't really seen before ever in NHL history. You could talk about the Datsuks and the two-way game and the dangling that he can do, but Trevor Zegras and the way he's able to control the puck on his stick, this guy is just in another stratosphere than anybody else in the NHL today. And he's the number one marketing boy because of it. Now, sure, he has his setbacks. You could say that he kind of has a larger-than-life personality. You could say that his game doesn't really uphold the standards to which the great sport of hockey should be played, a la John Tortorella, or even a la the GM Pat Verbeek. But at the end of the day, this is a great player. Very talented, very skilled, very useful. William Nylander, on the other hand, does indeed have a contract extension thing that needs to go on himself, and he has been a consistent 80-point guy the past two years. He has been good in the playoffs, he has been productive, he has been arguably more important than Matthews, Marner, or Tavares at certain points throughout last season. The thing is, if Nylander goes over to a team like Anaheim, would they be able to sign him? Well, the answer is very clearly yes. The Anaheim Ducks have about $16 million in cap space at the time of recording this audio. The reason they're not giving the money to Zegris is because they just kinda don't want to, and they've been lowballing him. They don't think his game is as valuable as Zegris believes his game to be, or even any of us who are not in the Anaheim Ducks management staff. 
If it's William Nylander, though, that they're going to shell out six, seven, eight million dollars to, then it's probably easier to do that because Nylander... He doesn't have the same dangling skills that Zegras has. He has a little bit more of a reliable game, I would say. Plus, Nylander has started to play center throughout this preseason, so there's some added value onto him. When it comes to Willie, though, this is the kind of guy that I think most people could acknowledge Pat Verbeek probably likes more and believes in more than what we are seeing out of Trevor Zegras as a player. So it would make a lot of sense if a trade were to be made and William Nylander is all of a sudden given a salary in the eight, nine, ten million dollar range. He gets to live in California, and the Ducks still have six million dollars to re-sign Jamie Drysdale. On the other side of the pond, you've got Trevor Zegras, who will be going over to a Toronto team that would just free up that money for Nylander. If you could just take the extra dollars you got saved up from Willie and give them to Zegras instead, say, okay, Nylander had a $6.9 million deal. He was going to ask for eight or nine next year. Zegras, how about we just go five plus years? We give you 6.5, we give you 6.9, we give you seven maybe even, and we'll call it a day. That seems like one of these classic type of long-term deals that would really set both the team and the player up for success. The player will get a long-term commitment with good dollars attached to it, and the team gets the player at a reasonable dollar amount. Zegras at 60 points a year is already kind of worth five, six, seven million dollars. If he gets better, if he's all of a sudden making beautiful Michigan passes to Austin Matthews, if his playmaking is combined with Mitch Marner to create the ultimate deceptive power play in the NHL, and he gets, let's say, 70, 75, 80 points per season, then all of a sudden, his point production is a steal for the dollar amount. Now, when it comes to trade value, and this is where things get a little bit interesting, if you were to tell me that a trade with Nylander and Zagris would just be one for one, honestly, I kind of buy it. Like, the whole philosophy that people say when oh, you're trading away a player that is already proven and already worthy of a good dollar amount for a young guy, Everybody likes to say, okay, well, the young guy is not proven. Older player, he is. But the thing is here, Zegras is already proven. He's 22, yes, he's still super young, but he's had two seasons of 60-plus points playing on the Anaheim Ducks. What more if he was with Tavares, Matthews, and Marner? I mean, no disrespect, of course, to the Anaheim Ducks. They have their own plan in place. But if Pat Verbeek is super set on Leo Carlson and Mason McTavish being the 1-2 center combo on this team and you're not really thinking about Zegras anymore, that guy's the odd man out, then why would it not make any sense to trade this guy away, get Nylander, maybe stick him on the wing, if you wanted to play him at center you could, but stick him on the wing with a Leo Carlson, have that Swedish connection, and let things prosper there. Plus the fact that the Toronto Maple Leafs kind of need to fix this Nylander situation as soon as they can. They might just use him as a rental for this year, let him go to free agency next season, Brad Trilliving pulls off a Johnny Gaudreau 2.0, maybe that's in the cards, but if they just trade Nylander away for a guy that can help them out in the now, while still being able to contribute at a cheaper dollar amount than $10 million next year and beyond, then this Segris idea is not a bad bet in my opinion. I think this actually works, and if it were to go down this way, let's say just one for one, I would not be surprised if that was the case. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this Nylander Zegras thing? It was brought up on Spit and Chicklets. The link is going to be in the description if you want to listen to the audio clip in which this came from. It's on Twitter. It's like about a minute and a half long. But Zegras for Nylander. What are your thoughts on this? If you're a Ducks fan, what are your thoughts on acquiring Nylander? Speeding up the rebuild a little bit. If you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, what are your thoughts on acquiring Zegras to play with Matthews and Marner? Where do you see this trade conversation going? And do you think a one-for-one -one trade is appropriate? Yet. If not, what other assets do you think need to be added on to make this equal? Sounds in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99. And bye.